Now, to make this look a little bit more interactive and have it feel like something is happening, let's introduce a little bit of animations to the project. So, uh, I will be leaving a description down below to my tutorial about using Mixamo, uh, because I will be going through it fairly quickly in this episode, uh, just to get through things. Uh, but if you want to look through that tutorial and get a little bit uh, better knowledge about how to get all the... Uh, I will be providing a link also to the, uh, the skeleton if you don't want to... If you don't have that skeleton, so you can use it in Mixamo. Uh, if you run into any issues with actually getting the animations or anything like that, you can watch the Mixamo tutorial and, and see how, how things are done. It should cover everything, I think. Um, anyway, so let's go to the Mixamo site. So here we are in Mixamo now, and we have this Unreal Engine skeleton loaded up. So let's find some uh, animations for us to use. So let's see, what can we use? Let's see this one. And let's just click download. And that's fine. And in addition to that, what is this? Sure, let's take this one. Or wait. Of course, this this is all a matter of um, preference, right? You can you can get whatever abilities that you want, basically, but. Um, or animations that you want, something that you feel fits. Um, it is it is not overly important uh, which ones you pick, but I'm gonna be picking. Uh, since we're gonna have three abilities, I'm gonna be picking three of these, and I'll just continue after I'm done picking. And then we will uh, see where we are. So here we are back, and these were the animations that I decided to go with. So let's just bring them in here, we'll just drag and drop them into our folder. And we want to import skeleton mesh, import skeletons, import animations. That is probably going to be fine. Let's try that and see. I'm just going to let this finish working and then I'll get back to you. So here we are with the import. You can see it has created a bunch of different uh, animations and stuff like that. So what we want... Mm, okay, this was not great. Let's do that a little bit differently. Let's remove all of this. Uh, delete. And the reason why I wasn't too happy about that was because it uh, it imported multiple skeletons. So let's just import uh, the skeleton mesh first. Uh, like so, and we'll let that finish and then I'll get back. Okay, that was done fairly quick. Uh, so now we have gotten a skeleton over here and we have a mesh, uh, not the best named mesh, but let's call this one standing uh, Mixamo, like so. And we call this skeleton standing, we call it Mixamo skeleton. So now we have gotten that in here and it has materials and stuff like that. So now we want to have the animations themselves. So we'll just drag this in here. And we don't, we want to import animations. We don't want to import the mesh. We want to choose the Mixmo skeleton that we just named. And da -da -da. let's see here. Yeah, I think this is it. So we have it like so. Uh, we're choosing the Mixamo skeleton and we're importing all. Now hopefully we should get all the 
uh, animations rigged to this skeleton or imported to this skeleton so we only have one skeleton so I'll let it finish now now the import is complete here you can see that we have our different animations marked we can mark everything Control s to save it we can open them up to see if they look okay that one looks fine that one looks fine and that one looks fine okay uh, the first thing we need to do now is we need to open up our, we can open up this, the skeleton mesh here. And we want to go to its skeleton and we want to make sure that it has its skeletal mesh here as its preview and apply. And we want to say save and we want to close it. We can close this animation. Then we can go to our mannequin folder which and the character and then the mesh which has the skeleton mesh over here we can just go to the skeleton and this one has the skeleton mesh already so that's good so the next part is we need to go to the the retarget manager and we click our select humanoid rig we save and we can close this one down let's go back to our first one again and make some more skeleton and retarget manager and which is humanoid rig like so save close it down and let's just save everything so that everything should be saved and done now the point of this being of course that uh, now these two different skeletons the normal mannequin one and the mixed skeleton should have their preview set and should be having the same poses and the same rig so we should be able to be able to retarget uh, animations between them now so if we take these animations that we wanted, we go up here to retarget anim assets. Then we should be able to click on our mannequin skeleton over here and you see they have the same pose. And we'll just click retarget and now it creates duplicates of these animations. So while it's doing that, we can create a folder. We can call this Mixamo and we can just chuck everything related to that in there so that it's out of the way because it's not really that interesting we just used it to download stuff to have it retargeted to our actual character that we're using uh, save all and our animations now by default because i didn't put anything in they're gonna have end up in the content folder over here so we can just bring these back into our blueprints folder and opening up them up now they they seem to work so what we're going to be needing to do with these are we're going to be making anime montages of these. So we go to create and create anime montage and we'll just keep the default name, that's fine. We do that for all three of these, like so. So now we have the three anime montages that we're going to be using for our abilities later on. Uh, we start up the first one, which in my case is this magic attack uh, 03. And now we're going to be creating uh, this event, an animation notification or notify, which will have code triggering upon it. So we can pause this for now and we can find the place in this animation where it looks like the, the ability is actually being used. So if we were to drag this scrub, not that one, we want to drag, drag no, not that one, get, get, go away. There we go. So we use the scrubber and we say that maybe there the ability is supposed to be used, let's say. So we right click here on the notify row and we add a notify. And we have nothing under skeleton notifies right now. But if we click new notify here now, we call this uh, ability trigger. Now we have created a notify at this point for this specific uh, skeleton in this animation. So we close this, save and close. We open up the next one. We pause this one as well and we drag the scrubber to where we think this one should be activating. Let's say that that would be there. We right click on notify, add notify and now under skeleton notifies you see that we have the one that we created before so we can reuse this um, notification for all our three different uh, animations that we have. So let's find a place for this one as well. So this one, I think that there is a good place. Now this is completely up to you to decide where 
where is a good spot for it to be for have your ability activating but for me this is fine and you're always able to tweak by going in and moving uh, uh, the trigger around on the timeline for uh, to a different time if you feel like later on so that's that's not an issue Now to have this actually function with our animation blueprint, we're going to have to make some adjustments. So we can go to our third person character and you can find the animation blueprint over here, clicking the magnifying glass. So we open that one up. Uh, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to uh, allow for our animation montages to play. And we do that by going to our anim graph which uses the state machine to determine the final pose. We're going to be right clicking and typing in uh, default slot. So now we get a slot which we can play and uh, montages in and it will uh, be overriding the states over here. So that's all good. Uh, by going to an animation, we can look at uh, over here you can see that it has a default group default slot and that's why this one is named default group default slots so it knows that this is where it should be playing that we need to do one more thing we need to go to the event graph because now for this skeleton which this uh, animation blueprint knows of we're going to be reacting to the animation notify that we just created so we right click and we type in uh, ability trigger we called it i think yeah so now you see this event actually appears. So it, it knows of this um, notification now because they're sharing the same skeleton, the animation blueprint and those animations. So from here, we're gonna get pawn owner. So whoever owns this animation blueprint, we're gonna be casting it to a third person character. So, and then we're going to be actually uh, finally triggering it. So I think I called it here. So we want to call animation ability trigger. And this is something that we did way back uh, that you might not remember anymore, but let's go through it. So when we get to a certain point in animation, we want to call uh, this animation, no, this event dispatcher in the third person character. So let's go look at the third person character. So here we have animation ability trigger. And let's go, let's see. Animation ability trigger, animation ability trigger. So this is the event dispatch that's going to be happening. So anybody who's listening to this will be reacting to it. Now how this works is we created a function which we call play animation bind use and we say whoever sends in an event in here we should be binding it to animation ability trigger which is the event that's being called in the animation blueprint now so that's how all of this is coming together now i hope that makes sense that is all for this episode hope to see you in the next one keep on learning take care